Hey guys, Ashby at Ashby Farms. So we're out here at one of our bee yards today. Just uh, been doing some maintenance, checking on everybody, and uh, everybody's basically at a, we did some balancing out, but everybody's got at least four frames of brood. We've got a nine frame box plus a feeder. So I've got a 12 volt, 12 volt marine battery, 55 gallon barrel. This is a Flowjet electric 12 volt pump. So we got them hooked up here. Um, Got a hundred foot hose comes off of that. We mix our sugar off that same battery. <laughs> got uh, got my boat, my boat's trolling motor. So we just bring water with us, and then we mix it up here on site. So walk out here. Corey, Corey and I are a team. My, my girlfriend, <laughs> and she's really the boss. Y'all like, heard the that, right? Y'all heard that. So check this out. We basically get through. You know, here's our here's our hive. There you go. So everybody's got a little room for expansion. We open up our feeders. That way we don't have to disturb the bees. And I'll show you how we just go kind of right down the line, and she's gonna just fill. That's an on-demand pump. It automatically keeps uh, like 40 PSI in the hose. Um, but it's really nice because of how fast we can deliver. You know, that's, that's a gallon of syrup there. If I come back, I want a little light on these first. Four, six, eight, I can't remember that. Just kidding. So I'm pretty good at eyeballing how much liquid feed we have. But in this case, we've got uh, 35 hives and I think we've got 40 gallons. So I should be good to fill them up. But the first 10 down there, I'm only giving about three quarters of a gallon. I can always come back to them and uh, top them off later on. So this time of year, we just don't want a lot of spillage. Um, you can create some robbing. If these hives were much stronger than this, this would probably create a robbing frenzy and we would do it at night. But uh, like I said, today we were just moving these. These were in nuke boxes and we moved them into a, a 10 frame box, which has a feeder plus nine frames. Um, and actually to note about these, we only found three of these hives still having any honey in them. Um, so, you know, here it is like June the 19th and these bees are about to starve out. Uh, Cause they're splits, there's no forage right now. So we gotta feed them. But by doing this, um, they'll put this feed away. Now they're not gonna starve. The queen will get to lay in. They'll draw this out. Um, you know, today being June 19th, that means we'll feed them about every two weeks. So we've got like, you know, July 1st, July 15th, August 1st, August 15th feeding. Which will help to go ahead and put a little bit of sugar into the hive now getting them ready for fall. And also that allows them to go ahead and expand out the, uh, the brood nest, keep the numbers of the colony up. And the reason that's important, um, so we want, we have a nice goldenrod flow here in the fall. So we want to have enough bees come September 1st. Well then that means, that egg needs to be laid like July 15th. So we gotta keep the queen stimulated July 15th, August 1st, August 15th, to keep the colony numbers up so we got enough foragers to go get uh, all the goldenrod honey and then let the bees do what the bees do. And that saves me from having to buy them and put away so much sugar. in Piedmont, North Carolina, that we get a nice spring flow. We get pretty much dearth all summer, and we get a nice fall flow with the goldenrod uh, and the aster, but you know, those are, they're, goldenrod's not super dependable, but fortunately we've got quite a bit of it just right in this area where we live. So I'm not saying we bank on it, but it sure is nice to uh, have the bees. If you're gonna end up feeding the bees anyways, might as well keep the colony numbers up. all these 
all these nuke boxes here are gonna go with us today. Um, we're gonna be making splits out of those tomorrow, Monday. I, I guess you have to say splits into them. We've got some 10 frame double deeps that are nice and uh, heavy. So we'll go in and we'll make splits directly to the nuke boxes. Go and put a feeder in them, get some feed on them. Everybody right now is getting feed. Um, this will be our, I don't know how many days in a row we've been feeding. <laughs> but there's three, a lot of, yeah, three, 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 four days in a row we've been doing feed. So as we make our way around, you know, we can basically forget about this hive now for two, three weeks. And we don't really have to do anything. They got a lot of room to expand. Um, here's a good example. I mean, here this hive's got one, two, three blank, four, five, six blank. It's got three there, but it's three nice um, frames of capped brood. Everybody here just got equalized, so they're three to four frames of capped brood in every one. I'll feed that. Here's a good example of get a, a float stick to prevent drowning in this one. And we've got a screen over here to prevent drowning in that one. You're gonna get some drowning, but you know, anything in there that can help them have something to grab onto. They'll grab onto each other and pull each other down. So it's just a good idea to have something in, the, in your, if you don't have the cap and ladder systems, um, it's good to have something in there for them to grab onto. Finally got a little break in the weather. It's on like a high of 82 today. It's Father's Day. And, Happy uh, Father's Day, Ashley. Thank you, thank you. And um, so we got these here and we're gonna work on some tomatoes later on this evening. Falling down on the job. Falling down. Come on, Corey. <laughs> now I need to get myself together over here. We're a little tired. Yeah, so it's a little... We've been at this for about three hours, getting everybody equalized, everybody looking good. And we've also been working all week in yeah. the heat. We had 107 degrees one day, 101 another day. Um, I'm not the young man I once was. <laughs> This pump system, last year we were taking buckets. Oh goodness, five gallons. Square buckets, we go, I got a drain on the blue barrel, drain it out, come over here. Lift it up, tilt it, it over, try not to spill it. Making huge messes, like it just wasn't feasible. Um, this has just been a game changer doing it this way this year. When you get a hose, this is something else. Get a no kink hose like this. It's worth the money <laughs> um, to not have to mess with kinks in your hose all day.
Yeah. You got a hole in your suit. Yes, I do. <laughs> That's what you do trying to mess with tomato seeds in your bee suit. <laughs> if only you would stop using it long enough for me to sew it up. I can have one day without a bee suit. <laughs> That'd be great. Pretty much in our bee suits every day this time of year. I'm gonna make sure and get the get the uh, two hives closed up next to each other, so you don't end up. Sometimes our war our wood lids they warp a little bit, like corner to corner. Um, when that happens, see if we got it. Okay. You know, when that happens, you end up getting a little crack there. We can get some robbing going on. Easiest way to solve that is just push them, you know, push them together like that. Remember to go back down here to these last 10 hives and just top them off. Um, I don't want to go ahead and open them up now that I filled them up because then you'll end up creating a robbing situation. Um, there you go. It's four frames. Basically, we make in the spring make two frame splits which are fairly weak hives um, and then we feed them up you know we we, we caught the tail end of you know, nature's nectar um, and clover and uh, got mimosa a very little privet a little chestnut um, but for the most part that's kind of the end of our nectar flow there And now we just gotta feed them sugar the rest of the year. My goal is to just have a nice, nice single to go into winter with. If we can get them to just draw out the wax between now and fall, we'll catch enough goldenrod for them to put away, you know, 40, 50 pounds per hive. Um, and they'll be set for winter after that. So I try and fill them up, let's just show them. I don't fill them completely to the top where they overflow. That last little quarter inch, um, it's not gonna make a big enough difference, but the worst thing you could have is an overflow into the colony and then you gotta rob out a robbing situation and you know, you lose lose a colony to bees attacking each other. And... That's a wrap. Ashby at Ashby Farms. Say hi, Corey. Hi, Corey. <laughs> Forgive my. Uh... Show us your your beautiful face. <laughs> oh my gosh! Don't. <laughs> she's the gal behind the camera, but uh, she's always out here helping me. So, guys, we enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day.